My name is Wayne Johnson. It is the 14th of July, 2020. Welcome to our update on the current status of African swine fever. African swine fever continues to break out all across Asia and China. There is a massive outbreak that has been occurring in the Philippines for several months. ASF has devastated the small producers in the Philippines and in China. The small producers are unable to defend themselves and understand neither the disease nor biosecurity, and the disease continues to spread everywhere in Asia. Some herds and some pig outfits have experienced multiple outbreaks of ASF. Some buildings have been repopulated and then broke out again and then depopulated and repopulated again over and over. Most of the pig herds with good biosecurity practices have not had any problems at all. They have avo entirely avoided the problem with ASF and haven't had any trouble whatsoever. In China and around the world, wherever there's ASF, this ASF sick pigs continue to be sold for slaughter. There has been no slowdown in the slaughtering of these pigs. People will take the pigs and send them to market to get whatever salvage value they have. They can do that whenever they see that ASF is occurring. There is no effective government indemnities anywhere in Asia that we are aware of, and the producers will try to get whatever the money they can out of the ASF pigs as soon as possible, whether they be alive or they be dead. The primary spread of ASF is still by the trucks used to haul pigs. The trucks are the main problem. All of the known ASF cases that we, that we have seen, all the known cases of reinfection that we've seen have involved a truck in one way or the other. There haven't been any reinfection cases that we are aware of where the feed was a suspected cause for the reintroduction. Every time there's been a truck um, involved in some way. And since ASF pigs go to slaughter every day in an ASF infected country, the meat scraps, the meat, and the waste, and the offal from ASF pigs are a constant potential source of the ASF virus. They are a problem really for the whole world. The feed and the feed bags and the feed transportation is still an ASF risk. However, there is presently a great deal of diligence and vigilance in regard to feed, and it's not very likely if, as this ASF thing goes on that the feed continues to be the problem whenever an infection occurs. We have seen some cases where the feed was very, very highly suspected as being the route of the AFSF infection in a large sow herd. ASF cleanup programs. Herds can indeed be cleaned up by test and removal strategies without total depopulation. If they want to clean up ASF, they can do it without getting rid of all of the pigs. It's quite possible. We have done this successfully, and it's not terribly difficult if you catch the disease early. In many herds, the workers don't tell anybody that there is a problem until it's gone on so long that it's impossible to do anything about it rather than just depopulate and clean up. But if the farms are appropriately designed for easy cleaning of hard surfaces, then having an extended downtime is of no particular use. We just need enough time to get it cleaned up. If it is a kind of farm with a lot of steel and concrete and modern enclosed buildings, those don't need long downtimes. We typically suggest three or four weeks, and then we usually will use some sentinel pigs to make sure that the farm is, uh, is really clean. We'll test those sentinel pigs to see if they have any problems. 
The USDA research suggests that perhaps only a one hour downtime was enough for ASF after the use of appropriate disinfectant. I can't understand why anyone should think that the farm should have to have a long downtime of several weeks or several months whenever the trucks have no such downtime. They use the trucks, they clean them up, and then they go again. So why would a, why would a farm be any different fundamentally from a truck in this situation? If it's okay to use a truck in a few days, then it has to be okay to use a farm in a few days. If a farm requires several months to be cleaned up, then what about a truck? Why aren't we waiting several months for a truck to be cleaned up? So these really long, long downtimes that uh, have been suggested really have no basis in science, and nobody is going to agree to let their trucks uh, 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 sit for a long time, so we need to, uh, to think about what we're doing. ASF vaccination. There are several different candidate vaccines that have been developed around the world. The USDA has been working on a vaccine for a long time. Perbright Vac Institute in the UK is working on it too. Spain has developed some vaccines and there's been some work done in China and are being to develop new ASF vaccines. There are many uh, unapproved and killed ASF vaccines that are in use in China and in Southeast Asia. There is a double gene deleted vaccine that was used quite extensively in China. We're not sure how many doses of it were actually used, but we would certainly say that no doubt there were hundreds of thousands of pigs or maybe even millions of pigs that were vaccinated with a double deleted vaccine. The double deleted vaccine has caused a great many problems here. It will cause signs that are very typical of a systemic viral disease. If the sows are vaccinated with this double gene deleted vaccine, there will be widespread abortion storms, infertility, mummification, stillborns, and weak pigs, all the things that we expect to see with a, a systemic viral disease. There is also increased preweaning mortality in the pigs born to these vaccinated sows. The vaccine by itself causes chronic atypical ASF in the growing and finishing pigs. In a lot of ways, this looks just like an outbreak of some systemic viral disease, maybe like classical swine fever or PERS or maybe anything like that except when you look at the pigs and whenever you test the pigs by PCR, you find that there is ASF virus in the tissue. By PCR, one can further determine if it is indeed the ASF gene-deleted vaccine virus or the wild-type ASF virus. So now whenever we test for ASF, we will test to see if it is the vaccine virus or if it is the field virus that is causing the problem. For a little while, we were seeing a lot of cases of the vaccine virus disease, and it has caused a great deal of problems here in China. A seven gene deleted ASF vaccine that's being produced in China in Harbin and it has been shown so far to be quite safe. We think that the safety of this seven gene deleted vaccine is not an issue at all. But does this vaccine work? Probably it does not cause uh, any clinical ASF by itself, unlike the chronic disease problem that the uh, double gene deleted vaccine has caused. The seven gene deleted vaccine does indeed prevent the most severe clinical signs of African swine fever. Unfortunately, it does appear thus far that this vaccine is unable to prevent infection, and it seems unable to prevent persistent infection. In the addendum that was published with the research report, it was shown that indeed the vaccinated and challenged pigs did develop a persistent infection. 
Researchers could find the field virus in the lymph nodes, spleen, tonsil, and various other organs of the pigs after they had been vaccinated and exposed to the virus. This result is really uh, not good. It's actually similar to what we've seen over the years with, with the classical swine fever virus vaccine, and it indeed is fairly typical of what viruses do. What they are seeing with this vaccine is uh, what, we, what is called the premunition effect. They used to teach veterinarians about uh, premunition in virology. It was the first thing that we learned in virology was in regard to premonition. Premonition is a French word that applies to the kind of chronic infection that is characteristic of virus infections. Indeed, it's the kind of infection that viruses generally do produce, but in some individuals. There is partially protective immunity, but not enough immunity to get rid of the virus and a persistent latent infection as a result. So when you, sometimes when you vaccinate, we can be setting the animal up uh, in some situations for a chronic infection. So a vaccine like this ASF vaccine might be permissible if we have an emergency situation and we have growing pigs that are all going to go to market. It could be possible under some sort of a certification program to vaccinate a group of pigs or a large group of pigs or a whole farm of pigs and finish them out to slaughter. Rather than pay a large indemnity on the pigs, one might just go ahead and vaccinate them and send them to market. In the end, however, when it occurs that there is a vaccine available, and quite likely there is going to be a vaccine available, everyone is going to want to use it. Everybody is going to want to sell this vaccine, and it is going to be a real problem. And if the pig industry uses such a vaccine in breeding animals and in seed stock animals, we're going to see chronic ASF, much as like what we've seen over the years with chronic CSF, and we're going to have a real problem as a result of the use of this, uh, of this vaccine. It's not going to be the, the panacea. The chronic ASF in, vac in, uh, in vaccinated pigs is... Uh, is could be a real uh, problematic situation. They have been vaccinated for classical swine fever here in China uh, for almost 70 years. Before ASF showed up here, CSF was the number one pig disease problem in China. Therefore, we are, we are personally really not uh, in favor of the use of this vaccine. It may be okay for an emergency situation where there are really good controls, but indeed here I'm talking about controls of the kinds that we usually don't have uh, here in China. Chronic ASF in vaccinated pigs. The unapproved double gene deleted ASF vaccine will induce antibodies in the vaccinated pigs that can be detected by ELISA. One can detect the antibody to the P72 protein. The unapproved illegal gene deleted vaccine does induce antibodies that can be detected with a standard ELISA kit that's available for ASF antibodies. The vaccine virus does contain the P72 gene, so it will induce uh, uh, antibodies to the uh, P72. The vaccine virus is indeed weakened and difficult to detect in oral fluids. And it's even in difficult to detect it in the blood since it's present only in very low numbers. Further, the pigs may be making antibody uh, that is removing the ASF from the blood I should point out that we absolutely do not recommend oral fluids for detection of the ASF virus in pigs. The amount of virus in the oral fluids is hundreds or thousand times less the amount in the, than the amount in the blood. Sometimes people are wanting a negative test and so the oral fluids become quite handy for the people who want to demonstrate that the ASF virus is not present. Blood is much better as a sample if you really want to know what's going on. There's no real problem with taking a 
taking a blood sample. Uh, some of the vaccinated pigs are negative in the blood, but if you'll take a lymph node out of those pigs, you can find the virus. Actually, any kind of lymphoid tissue, such as lymph node, tonsil, or spleen, may have the virus inside, and if you look at it long enough, you can find the vaccine virus uh, there uh, if it is present. Antibody testing is useful to find out if the animals have been exposed to the vaccine. The producers may not want to say that the pigs were vaccinated, but a antibody test will tell you what's going on. Uh, vaccinated growing and finishing pigs can show fever, apparently due to the vaccine virus itself, and some morbidity, but rather low mortality. A few pigs will die, and if you open those pigs, you can find the ASF uh, vaccine virus uh, in those pigs. The kidneys often will have uh, typical uh, ASF-like lesions in the kidneys, hemorrhages in the lymph nodes, and uh, then where it, whenever, whenever you do histopathology, you will find that they have chronic ASF lesions. They have lymphoid destruction. There's a lot of vasculitis. A thrombosis, infarction, a necrosis, and fibrosis in the multiple organs of these pigs. It's very, very disconcerting to look at the chronic uh, lesions in pigs that have been vaccinated with the illegal uh, ASF vaccine. We now have some producers developing ASF tolerant genetics. Some producers have uh, retained pigs that are tolerant to the ASF virus. These are likely to become ASF carriers and are not at all what we need uh, in the future. Some thoughts about the future of uh, African swine fever. What is on the road ahead? And uh, uh, what is go we're going to see new outbreaks. What is the impact of these new outbreaks? African swine fever is still a significant threat for the entire world's pig production, and it can be expected to be disruptive to international trade for some years to come. The small-scale producers really have a lot less to lose than the large-scale outfits from an ASF outbreak. But the small-scale producer has difficulty to adapt his biosecurity techniques to make sure that he doesn't get the disease. Some of the small outfits don't have good ways to clean things up. They don't have any way to cloak and control the trucks that come to their farm. The small producers don't have any way to control the feed suppliers. They really have very great difficulty to control their situation. So we do expect most of the small producers to gradually go out of business. Their inevitable disappearance is accelerated by African swine fever. Now, on the other hand, the large-scale producer is massively impacted by ASF losses and can lose a lot of money. The disappearance of wealth due to ASF can be astounding. It is quite some question just how much economic loss they can stand even if they have very deep pockets and the support of the social government. Some companies have been forced to sell out and there are acquisitions of farms that are simply going out of business because they lost too much money from ASF. Some outfits are trying to get bailed out by banks and by investors but it's still not very clear how much and how many events like ASF losses that a large-scale producer can stand. The food security risk. China has become a massive importer of pork and pork products. This level of importation of pork is not sustainable and cannot continue forever. One cannot imagine that a country like China can continue to import pork for the next 40 to 50 years while they are dilly-dallying on the matter of ASF eradication. Imports from low-cost to production countries are a threat 
to the local market price of hogs that cannot be sustained forever, even with import quotas and heavy tariffs, if there is not a vibrant local pork industry pushing back at importation. Exportation at the present level is further also unsustainable for the producers in the exporting countries because China will be constantly trying to free itself of pork importing business and stop the hemorrhage of dollars for pork. The local farmers in the exporting countries also cannot afford to be dependent upon exports for their livelihood because the exports to China are a thing that will come and go because China wants to get out of the bad business of importing pork. So for the exporter, their temporary windfall market is constantly in the mode of being just about to disappear for them and cause oversupply to become a problem. This high level of pork importation is a food security risk for the import dependent country. At any moment, a Jimmy Carter of sorts can cut you off just because he decides that he doesn't like the way that you do one thing or the other. The supply side country can suddenly decide that he's going to starve you into agreeing with him and cut off your food supply. This sort of thing has been a common tactic of trade conflict over the centuries. We should be well aware of it. It is not a good idea to be dependent upon food from some other country, and this level of importation is an unsustainable situation for China. Because it's unsustainable for China, the dependence upon this level of exportation is also unsustainable for the exporting countries also. The meat packers in the US are making windfall profits off of the export of pork to China, but this is not something that's going to continue forever. If the pork producers in the exporting countries should gear up their production to meet this need for export, they're going to find themselves someday in an overproduction situation because China will constantly be trying to work itself out of the import business. Is there an eventuality of an outbreak of ASF among the exporters in Europe and the Americas? ASF anywhere in the modern world is a threat to the whole world. Such an event would put a triple whammy on the world pork industry. China would quit importing pork from any country that had ASF. The production in the exporting country would suffer from the disease. And further, the uninfected local producers would be unable to find an export market for their oversupply of pork. China would be continuing to demand import of pork, but would be unable to do so because their suppliers would be forbidden. Europe has an ASF problem in its domestic and wild pig populations, but to eliminate the disease, Europe must come to grips with the sentimentality issues among its populace. The people of Europe want to keep their wild pigs. That the wild pigs are part of their national heritage and they wanted to defend that. And at the same time, ASF and other diseases in those wild pigs is a tremendous risk for the pork industry in their countries. Europe must deal with it. They must eradicate ASF in their wild boars with extreme prejudice if they to continue to raise pigs. In China, the tracking and monitoring of pigs to slaughter has to be upgraded. We have got to have real information coming out of the slaughterhouses. 
there isn't any real information coming back from slaughterhouses. I and mean, however difficult it is to get this information, they're going to have to start to get it if there is any intention to get rid of this disease. Some people in China still expect that they're going to vaccinate their way out of ASF. It seems impossible that they're going to vaccinate their way out of this ASF mess. The expected chronic ASF has already manifested itself. The disease will continue to be spread by vaccinated pigs. That's the one thing that we can count on for sure going down the road. One possible way out is that the few remaining large producers would organize themselves and implement a slaughter monitoring program that the present national organizations have refused to do. Eventually, the producers will have to track the pigs themselves. It's one way that it may turn out. Next, it's going to require antibody testing because there are going to be vaccinated pigs with ASF that uh, won't be picked up with a test for the, for the virus itself. We'll still require nucleic acid detection, uh, the, but the DNA test can pick up both the vaccine virus and the field virus, and we can distinguish between those as well. A recent article by Danzetta et al. in the Frontiers Journal of Veterinary Medicine uh, reviews some of the successful national eradication programs. I've selected three key elements that are pertinent to China and to Asia. First of all, slaughterhouse monitoring is an essential part of those programs. Second, there must be the ability to trace back pigs to the farm of origin. And thirdly, there would need to be some sort of indemnity support payments for forced depopulation. Danzetta's team uh, found that uh, successful programs do have all of these features, that they have slaughterhouse monitoring, uh, the ability to trace back, and indemnity payments. This is what uh, is going to be required for a successful elimination program. Thank you very much for your time. I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, I am Wayne Johnson with Enable Ag Tech in Beijing. Zai Jin.